Hey guys, Gavin Gay here from UltimateReloader.com. Wanted to tell you about a new product from Wilson Tools and Gauges. It's their new expanding mandrel die. I just built this six dasher rifle and have been working with new brass load development and that was the perfect opportunity to put this tool through its paces. So in this video, what we're gonna do is do a quick overview of this expanding mandrel die. We're gonna show it in use and then I'm gonna share some results, some tremendous results I've gotten with my initial load development using this expanding mandrel die, brand new alpha munitions brass and this high-end custom rifle that I've built. Let's get to it. So here's the expanding mandrel die. It's all stainless construction and like any other Wilson die, it's machined very finely. It's got standard 7 8 by 14 threading, comes with this very nice stainless lock ring with a set screw to preserve your die setting. And if we remove the plug here, we'll see where the mandrel attaches. These mandrels, you can swap them out in just seconds, as you can see here. This is the six millimeter mandrel that I'm using for six dasher, but the entire list of caliber supported are 22 caliber, 30 caliber, 33 caliber, six millimeter, 6.5 millimeter and seven millimeter. So regardless of what popular case you're working with, different cartridges, you're likely to find a mandrel that is gonna suit your needs and they are available separately or together as a kit as a complete functional expanding mandrel die. So we've got the appropriate mandrel installed. The next thing we're gonna do is install this die in the Forrester coax and verify the vertical setting of the die and show how this works. So before we get going with the die itself, I'm gonna prep these cases by applying a little bit of dry neck lube to the necks. And that's just gonna ensure that we don't get any galling between the stainless expanding mandrel and the brass cases themselves. So I'm just gonna pop the expanding mandrel die into the Forrester coax. I love how this is a great quick change situation for dies. Insert a piece of six dash or brass, and then we're gonna bring it up and see where we are on the mandrel. And we're up fairly high in that window, which is fine. We just wanna make sure that we're getting at least full engagement with the portion of the mandrel that actually does the expanding. Once we validate this setup, it's gonna be a quick matter to go through and size the rest. And what you can develop a feel for is you can feel it do the expanding. There's a particular portion of the mandrel that does the expanding, and that's about as far as you need to go. There we go. So let's take a look at the effect that this expanding mandrel has on the brass. The problem you'll encounter quite often is that brand new brass comes with undersized necks, and that can lead to excessive bullet seating force, higher SD numbers, and that little ring you see on the O-drive of the bullet where the seating stem is pushing with excessive force. So let's take a brand new piece of six dasher brass from Alpha Munitions and we're, we're gonna see where we're at with the inside neck diameter. So 239 and a half. And if we compare that to one of the pieces of brass we ran through the expanding mandrel die from Wilson, we're at 241 and a half. Let's see. 241 and a half. So we can see we open it up just a little bit. And what I found in my testing is that led to some very impressive numbers, which I'll share with you next. So this is an absolutely perfect set of components and gear to evaluate this Wilson expanding mandrel die. Why? Well, first we're dealing with six dasher, which is an amazingly accurate, amazingly consistent cartridge. That's why I selected it for my PRS competition rifle. We've got Alpha Munitions Six Dasher Factory Brass. It just does not get any more consistent. This is made in the USA. Top, top shelf components. We've also got Burger 105 Hybrid Targets. These have been a PRS favorite in cartridges like the six millimeter Creedmoor, the Six Dasher. I've got the new Burger 109 Long Range Hybrid Target Bullets. These bullets shoot absolutely amazing. So with the combination of these components, we're starting on, on a really great foot. And then I've also got this high-end custom rifle that I just built. Manners, MCS, T2A Gap stock, BAT TR Action. 
This action and the firing pin mechanism is like jewelry, and that is going to translate to more consistent ignition, which translates to lower SD numbers. I've got a cut rifle benchmark four groove barrel. I've got a loophole Mark V. This whole package is absolutely amazing, and I just started testing with this Sinclair bench rest, and I've got the protector model rear back. Okay, so this setup is a no nonsense, no excuses setup, and the data proves it. This is a little preview of my next video, which is the initial phase of my six dasher load development. I shot a couple 10 shot ladders, one with the 105s and one with the 109s and saw some absolutely amazing results, especially with factory brass. I was seeding my bullets 20 thousandths off the land. I made one of my own modified cases for the Hornady bullet comparator tool, the OAL gauge tool. And I'm also using the comparator for shoulder bump and for my bullet seating depth comparisons. So with the 109 bullets, I saw two nodes, one on the upper end and one on the lower end of the spectrum of different charge weights that I was testing. And at 32 grains of Varget, use this load data at your own risk. I always verify with multiple sources of, of manufacturer's data first. On this node, we saw a stability in our velocity and in follow-up OCW testing where I'm shooting five shot groups for accuracy, I measured with a magneto speed chronograph and got an SD of 2.2 feet per second on my velocity. That is absolutely outstanding, especially considering we didn't fire form the brass first and then anneal it in the amp and then shoot it. That's kind of what I would expect if we had everything completely dialed in. And groups here, these the groups were down into the sub quarter minute category of accuracy. And again, I'll have more detail on that in the full six dasher initial load development video. For the Burger 105s, similar results. I had, again, a lower node and an upper node. For 32 and a half grains of powder, I saw a standard deviation of three feet per second. I don't think I would have gotten results that good without the expanding mandrel die. And you can feel it when you're seeding the bullets. If you're using factory brass with undersized necks, you're going to feel the bullet seating. And when you use an expanding mandrel or if you're using a bushing and resized brass and you have optimized your neck tension for that one to two thousandths of interference fit, you're going to feel much easier bullet seating and you're not going to get those rings from the seating stem. So overall, I absolutely love this Wilson expanding mandrel die. I would highly recommend this for this type of long range, high precision reloading. My question is, what do you think? Have you used other products? Are you looking at this particular expanding mandrel dry? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe with notifications because I've got a lot of follow up content where you're gonna see this expanding mandrel die show up in those stories. And if you click on that first link in the video description, that's gonna to link to the article. I'll have links to product pages there and more information about this exciting new reloading die from Wilson. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.